Hi, this is Pat Moorhead, and we are live in Las Vegas at AWS reInvent in the IBM suite. I am here with my incredible co-host, Daniel Newman. Daniel, we are here, we are back. I mean, this place is hopping. You know? Absolutely is. Uh, it's quieter here than you know you saw when we were on the floor doing right. the videos and all the energy. Gotta say, I kind of like the calmness for these kind of conversations. But Pat, AWS reInvent is always a hot moment. It's a big yeah. event, and as analysts, something that we have to be paying attention to because this is really shaping what's going on in the market with cloud, with the advancement of the enterprise. Absolutely, and I'm really enjoying the maturity of the cloud. I mean, the cloud is 15 years old. It's you know, it's a teenager. It's it's not all the way there in adulthood, but it but it's getting here. And that brings us. Let's introduce our guest, Tom Rosamelli. How you doing? Not a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing great. Happy to be with you guys again. Yeah, it's great. Uh, gosh, we've had Tom multiple times uh, on uh, the six five, and it's it's great to see you again. Uh, maybe for the audience, uh, we'd love to hear for those who don't know you. What's your charge at, at IBM? Uh, what are you focused on? What's your span of uh, control? My focus is, is software. So I have the privilege of running the software business for IBM. Uh, and I've been doing that for about 18 months now, prior to that uh, with hardware, so you and I first met. Right. Um, but it's a, it's a real great challenge and a privilege and an honor to do it. Uh, my boss has called the play. It's all around hybrid cloud and, and AI and we're fully embracing that. And, and the great thing is everybody in IBM can get behind it. Uh, everybody can find themselves in the strategy, so there's really very little confusion. There's a lot of focus. Uh, and with all the moves we've made, he's made, you know, with the acquisition of Red Hat, uh, with the spin out of, of Kindrel, uh, you know, and this shift really to ecosystem of partners like AWS um, has really helped really helped us. Yeah, it's been an incredible run. I mean, I've been in and around IBM for, gosh, 32 years now. Competed with IBM uh, uh, in 1990, but watching the growth and the changes ha have been, it really has been an amazing thing, you know, to, uh, to watch. And uh, thanks for uh, making our analyst firms look really smart. Uh, <laughs> congratulations that on, was our uh, goal. on the success. I know, Tom, it's, it's all about us. So yeah, it, so, it, analyst business. Somehow, when they were in the in the war room figuring out their earnings announcement, I'm sure they were like, you know, that Pat and Dan. I know, um, I know. But in all serious, there is a lot to be uh, proud of right now. I, I remember listening the other day on CNBC and there was a comment about 52 week all, you know, high for the company. And, and obviously you said, you know, I think you and I backstage something about, you know, we do really well in rough, rough waters. It's a, it's it's a tough time, and even going back six months ago, uh, we sat, it uh, was Think, it yep. was right around six months ago. Yep. I can't believe how fast that's gone. Yeah. But uh, you know, we came to you and you were actually just announcing a big partnership that IBM was, was rolling out with AWS. So here we are at AWS reInvent. Talk a little bit about that. Where is that partnership at? Well, we started about a year ago and uh, signed our, our strategic agreement in, in May. Uh, to collaborate on moving our software. Lots of IBM software available on, on uh, AWS, but now to make it available as a service on AWS rather than be, uh, bring your own license. And so we announced back then 19 products, now it's up to 20 um, products that will be available on uh, AWS as a service. Um, since then, in, in August, we've, we've been teaming with IBM Consulting on bringing these patterns uh, to life uh, and to our clients, which is great. Uh, we made some uh, strategic announcements around enabling partners, uh, VADs and VARs, or value-added distributors and resellers and, and global system integrators to be able to take advantage of the, uh, and get credit for uh, selling our software on AWS, which is a big breakthrough for them and for us. Um, so a lot's happened. Back then I was telling you that there were about 10,000 uh, certified practitioners uh, within IBM Consulting. Now it's up to 15,000. So we've added 50% more skill and certifications really matter to partners. They know you're investing and they know you're committed when you get that many people certified in the technology. Today, we're making uh, th three and, and one beta product available uh, as a service. And, and so things like App Connect uh, and, and things like content services and Visi and a beta around some analytics work that we're doing uh, with uh, planning analytics, which will be available um, in the first quarter, so pretty soon. So we've gone from zero to, to four, eventually to 20 uh, products, and there'll be more. Uh, and it's been a great journey, and I, I really value the partnership I'm getting from, from Amazon. It's been a lot of progress. I mean, I know some people might say, oh, well, IBM, you know, they, they, they don't move quickly. I have to tell you, this is quick. 
right? And, and the fact that it's it's one year, this is not some 10 year, five year, and, and we're here now. You have products that are, are going, that are ready, that are going GA. And what I love about it the most is, is it's, it's really hitting, you know, we call it trends, but it's, it's what clients are looking for, right? No longer are we debating if the future is hybrid. It's hybrid, okay? Some people are debating if it's multi-cloud, but those are typically people who don't, uh, you know, want there to only be one cloud. But the, the fact is, I mean, I've never talked to a Fortune 1000 client uh, that wasn't on multi-cloud. It, it, it is the reality. And the data here. would say it's greater than 90%. We can debate whether it's 100 or, or 92, but <laughs> right. it's, and they're, they're multi-cloud, and they're going yeah. to be, and that's really the shape yeah. of the world, and they're going to be hybrid. I mean, we're seeing great collaboration. I was just talking to a client here about you know, spanning their mainframe to AWS and right. being able to use some of the same software in both places, have the same skills, and unlock the potential that they get right. from both IBM and AWS, yeah. which is great. Rob Thomas talked about embed embedded AI or embeddable AI. Can you talk a little bit more about that and how it relates to what you're doing with uh, with AWS? Yeah, it's actually it's uh, we made three libraries available to uh, largely to ISVs. Uh, these came out of IBM Research, and they're things like NLP, natural language processing, so text to speech, speech to text, and some capabilities around supply chain and and. You know, we don't talk about AI as a, as a thing anymore. It's like, it's embedded in a lot of what we do. So a lot of the products that we are making available have embedded AI in them. And uh, we had IS, ISVs, independent software vendors, who wanted to do the same, and so we were making those available to them so they don't have to write their own. We have some of the best researchers around speech and NLP, and so by making those f uh, features and capabilities available, lots of people can do it. So. Uh, I think it's it's a great way of showing that it's AI everywhere. Do, do you see, because you know, I was listening to the Adam Slipsky uh, keynote this morning and you know, data was in focus. There was a few other things, but data was one of the things that are in focus. And of course, what you said hit, hit home to me. AI is no longer like a category. AI is something that is overlaid everything in technology. So does, with what Rob talked about, that was within the IBM sort of ecosystem, but within the IBM plus AWS ecosystem, do you see that progressing into the public cloud and into those partnerships? I think it's possible. I think what's, what's, what's closer to see is that the products that we're making available on AWS have the embedded AI in them. So, you know, products like Invisi uh, for environmental use AI. Um, our security suite absolutely uses AI in you know figuring out what the bad guys are trying to do and looking for patterns. Um, so it's it's everywhere now. Seems like observability too, which has been another pretty big focus, would be a big opportunity for you guys to embed AI and make it available. Absolutely, and we're really pleased with what progress we're seeing with Turbonomic and Instana. Instana being uh, not the market leader yet, but one designed for containers, which is great, and Turbo really being a market leader around you know, resource management and the ability. By the way, we, we're making it available within Visi so that part of the way you can lower your carbon footprint is turning down things you don't need, you don't need to use. And so, you know, turbo resource managing your way to better outcomes. Um, you can even imagine saying, I'll, I'll run it in this data center versus that data center because I have a lower carbon footprint because the electricity there comes from wind and over here I'll, you know, make it up, comes from coal. So, you know, your carbon footprint could be modified depending on where you put the work. So Tom, uh, we're early days here in, in AI. I mean, first of all, to, to have a good AI strategy and implementation, the data's got to be clean, it has to be good, and not all data structures uh, work best with AI. In fact, analytics uh, can, can do a lot now. And in a way that I like to explain AI to the layperson is just it's an advanced version of analytics that's using different algorithms. I told you that. And big data. Did you? Did I? <laughs> did I lift that off you and give you zero credit? I, I may have. If I did, my, my apologies. I'll be sure to credit you next time. My, my macro question though is, um, do you see this speeding up everything uh, for the enterprise? I mean, we see AI and ML being used in consumer, big hyperscaler applications. Uh, but it's not nearly as fast as it is in the enterprise. And you're offering a PaaS service here. You know, you do pretty much, you'll do anything as a service, but it seems like this would speed everything up for I think it will. I think the greater access to this technology, the better, the faster it'll go. I, I, I have said it, I'm sure you came up with it yourself as well, but I think you know, in some ways we 
the industry chose to call it AI, and in some ways it scares people. And if we just yeah. said it was analytics plus plus plus, <laughs> it probably would have been fine, right? right. So, um, and but but embedding it in different places, like yeah. uh, I'll give you an, an example. 5GE, exactly. <laughs> or 5G plus. 5G plus. 5G plus. 4GE, whatever. Else. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think like uh, we're working with McDonald's on automating their drive-throughs. You know, it's speech, you know, recognition and right. figuring out what your order is and you know I, I got to see the demo it's really you probably saw it, it at, at think yeah we had it at think. It got my entire order correct it didn't want to remove my pickles for some reason yeah so okay well we, we probably worked that out since then but um and it's really because it's it, it's a really hard job to work in a drive through <clears> and you know you do that for a couple hours and i mean you know it, it's just exhausting I did it. I did it as a kid so there you tough. go there you go so you know, automating some of these jobs that not everyone wants uh, is, is, is a good way to do it. But I don't think the AI is this, you know, bad thing that's going to put people out of work. I really yeah. don't. I think it's really an enabling people to work differently. Uh, but automating back office uh, operations and, and HR functions and things like Watson Orchestrate that people can go in and you can even, mod, you can even uh, do some level of recording. Say, uh, I do these steps, watch me do them. Okay, do it, do it again a thousand times. Yeah, and there has to be so. something in supply chain. What I love about this is uh, you're hitting on the biggest conversations in the C-suite. This is what customers care about, right? It's, it's human capital and whether it's frontline workers or it's information workers or it's supply chain. I mean, everybody's spreadsheets in supply chain are, are, are changing. And it would seem that is a big data problem. It has a lot of history behind kind of cause and effect and it's, and it's multivariate. Uh, seems like uh, we could do something with that. So, Absolutely, I think yeah. AI is really going to help us with, you know, despite the, some downturn in tech uh, firms and hiring, uh, we still have a shortage of, of technology yeah. people, and so we're going to need to make this simpler, we're going to need to make it uh, more accessible for people, and we're going to need to automate as much as we can. Tom, you said so many sage things. <laughs> I love that you talked about the spreadsheet. I mean, we're going to have to wrap up here, but when, when I wrote Home, Human Machine, we actually studied this one very thing, Tom, was because in the future, is automation replacing and displacing, or is it augmenting? And I think the answer is if we do it right, it's it's augmenting, and as we saw with the talent shortage of these past few years, you know, we threw a lot of bodies at problems, we ran out of bodies. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. actually what happened, and so now we actually have to go back and finish all these projects, which is a great opportunity for IBM, and I think part of why you're doing so well. So, yeah. congratulations, Tom. Thank you, we'll stay humble. Loved sure. having you here <laughs> at AWS reInvent, in the IBM suite, on the 6.5. Got to get all those things in there. I know. We appreciate you, veteran to the show. We got to have you back sometime soon. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks, Thanks again. Well, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Hit those other episodes of the IBM episodes of 6.5, in the booth, on the road, in the suite. Pretty much everywhere. I We're know everywhere. This is a new at AWS reInvent. We really appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you again really soon.